Hey there, I'm sitting on that big orange case. It uh, makes a pretty nice case. So what the heck am I hauling around here? Well, I decided to make an office in a box. Why? Obviously, uh, COVID's still raging and I've got too much free time. No, as a general rule, I like traveling with one bag, but if you're going to be gone for uh, several months at a time, which is what I'm planning on doing, uh, the two to three week traveling and bouncing around is fine out of one bag, but I sort of miss my office. So I made an office in a box that I could take with me and I'm going to show it off to you guys and see if you think I'm crazy or have any suggestions or anything that um, you uh, like or dislike and would suggest I change. Uh, let's uh, go inside and go through the box. So as I'm putting together my office in a box, there were several things I was considering. First of all, how long am I going to travel? I love the one bag travel concept. And if I'm only going to be gone for a couple of weeks, sure, toss everything in a bag. I'll live off the laptop. If I'm gone longer, I start to crave having my actual keyboard, a real monitor, my docking station, and having a true setup. So the next thing I would consider is what can I check without incurring extra fees? It, and basically, that's weight and dimensions. If you're flying on most of the major airlines, it's 50 pounds max weight for a check bag before you start incurring those extra fees, 70 pounds if you're flying in first class or have status or something. And the cheaper airlines like Ryan and Spirit, they're about 40 pounds. I think Ryan's maybe 44 with the uh, kilometer or kilogram conversion. The next thing you need to consider is the external dimensions. You can't have just any old size bag no matter how light it is. Basically, most airlines have a limit of a 62 linear inches. That's width, height, width plus height plus depth. Check with the airlines. Everyone's a little different. The other things I cared about were protecting my gear, of course, that's actually in there. I wanted a durable hard shell type case. I wanted something that was waterproof. And because I'm a little lazy, I wanted something with wheels. So what I decided on was a Nanook 960. Why this one? Well, for various reasons. I looked around at different providers, obviously Pelican being a big player in this market and Nanook being something that cr basically crops up when you say alternative to Pelican. The primary reasons why I went with Nanook is Pelican is a great brand, but I had very specific dimensions that I needed to fulfill for both the monitor I was thinking about carrying and the requirements for the airlines. And of course, price comes into play. But I really couldn't find what I wanted for wanted exactly in Pelican, so I went to the Nanook 960, seemed to be the brand that hit all my needs. And of course, I like orange because it makes it easier to find when you're looking for your bags at the end of the flight. So specifically on the 960, it had the exterior dimensions that fit what I needed. Basically, if you add up the width, height, and depth, it makes that 62 inches. It's just below it at 59.9. Yay. The other aspect of the dimensions, of course, is the interior dimensions. And I had calculated I needed something like a 21 inch by 16.5 inch interior dimensions to fit the 24 inch monitor that I plan on carrying. Why a 24 inch monitor? I'm planning on traveling to Ecuador for the longest amount of time and their max import without fees is a 24 inch monitor. Don't ask me why. That's just their rules. So this particular luggage, the Nanook 960, met these dimensions. It was tough. It's a hard shell case like Pelican. You can stand on it. I haven't actually tried that because I'm kind of fat, but others can try it. It has wheels, nice pull-up handle, should check without problems. Uh, I forget the exact weight. It's, it itself is a little heavy for a case itself, but on par with the Pelicans. It's about 15 pounds, if I recall. Uh, so that leaves you 35 pounds for gear. Okay, now let's look at the load. Forgive the messy room. I've been making this load out. I've got stuff scattered all over the place. So as you can see, it's got a nice handle. It's got a couple handles here. It's got the nice locks in various places. Two on each, two side locks and one front lock. Two front locks, I mean. And it's got a little pressure relief valve there right in front. And it's got a nice O-ring. If you can see that ring going all the way around the top, uh, probably can't from this camera angle. As you can see instantly, I've got my gear, uh, some of the gear in here. Um, well, as we dig deeper, we'll see the different depths. I've got various cabling that I need for the docking station. I keep my Altoid cans, which I keep 
uh, USB and little SD cards in for one, and the other one I keep a collection of challenge coins because yeah, I'm into that, sorry. So one of the things that's not necessarily tech related that I put in here, I'll show you in just a second, is that CPAP machine that's sitting there. So right on top is the keyboard and the mouse, the things I need to grab out pretty quick. Let's look at each individual item. So of course, my trackball. I like trackballs. Now, if you recall, I did a video on these uh, virtual reality goggles for being alternative to display. I'm still playing with them. I'm not sure how I feel about them yet. But of course, I've got various cabling that I need to hook up the docking station and uh, different devices along the way. I've got my webcam that goes on my monitor for our, my Zoom sessions. And this is power supply for the docking. Sorry about the big forearm being in the way there. And even though it's not tech, I went ahead and put my CPAP machine in here. I keep one in my bag for travel, but I wanted to spare one and I packed it in here. And of course, my fancy touch keyboard. This is part of the monitor stand that I had in there. That was the top level. Now let's pull out and go one more level because it's a very thick box. I've got many levels in there. I've got more of the monitor stand, the other part of it here, an LED light for video, mouse and the actual docking station for my MacBook Pro. So there's the stand, part of the stand for the monitor. This is the actual docking station for the MacBook Pro Belkin. I have a trackpad in there because sometimes I feel like using trackpads instead of my trackball. And this is the LED light for doing videos. Uh, notice I took the battery out of it because it is a lithium ion battery. They're not happy in check luggage. It could come loose and you're not supposed to have loose batteries. So I removed it. So this is the very bottom. As you can see, I've got power supply and some plugs in there. And I've got my big old 24-inch monitor down there. I wish I could get my 30. Not going to happen. 24-inch at the bottom. And that's the loadout of this particular box. So that's my office in a box. Um, I hope you found it at least entertaining. And um, if you pity me for having too much free time and playing with this stuff, I understand. And I appreciate your pity. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you have any suggestions or comments or things you might want to change or certainly questions, um, leave comments. I'll answer them. And um, I'll send a link to uh, the Nunuk box that I got. That's about the only thing that um, is unique here. I could put in links to the equipment, but it's not that exciting. Um, take care. Hope you enjoy the video.